Wegener's continental drift theory of the 1910s and 20s met a largely hostile response in Europe and an overwhelmingly hostile response in North America. But workers living in the former Gondwana land took those ideas and ran with them. Now, long before we even had that name, they had been collating reports, and they found that a lot of areas should have coal in the Carboniferous, but don't, because they were too cold. They actually had evidence of glaciation. In some places, they even had examples of glaciers that must have been spreading away from the equator, which makes no sense at all. One theory was that the tropical areas of Gondwanaland had actually just been such enormously high elevation at the time that these unique weather patterns had resulted in them constantly being covered over by clouds, and that accounts for the presence of glaciers directly on and growing away from the equator. Dutoy, in 1921, had a simpler solution. He reassembled the former jumble of southern continents. And this arrangement explains the ice sheets. The continents were near the South Pole at the time, so Carboniferous glaciers formed a polar ice cap. This also revealed that the Permian Gondwana flora forms this continuous belt around that ice cap. Dutois even predicted that once the geology of Antarctica's crust was better understood, its composition would match the composition of the neighboring portions, or formerly neighboring portions, of Australia or South Africa or South America. And he was right, but it wasn't widely accepted at the time because there was no underlying mechanism known that could have driven the continents to move in this way. So why am I talking about it? Well, because Dutois, unlike seemingly every other paleogeographer of his time, did not come up with a unique name for his assembled southern landmass. He just reused the name Gondwanaland. 